They kind of look like me. Their lives have been broken by people of the opposite sex. They had never spoken of what would happen next. They stare at an ocean. They stare at a mirror, probably. In England, you're never more than 70 miles from the sea. So it's, it's all around us. And I'm very conscious that we are that being an island um, affects us in ways that probably we don't actually uh, articulate, but nevertheless are crucial to, to, to being not just English, but British. I was just sitting there for about 10 minutes and I solved two problems, like one for a client and one for a friend. And I, I wasn't even thinking, it, the answers just came into my head. Definitely I don't think about my problems, it's just an enjoyable moment. Yeah, and it's not such a frantic pace of life either down here. You just get the feeling of peacefulness, and that is it, I think. It's not only the old people down here, there's quite a lot of youngsters. There is something about crossing water that takes you to another place, and the physical act of crossing that water uh, is is some kind of a statement, I think. Uh, I think in this country, being an island, there is a sense that people actually not just walk to the beach, but drive to the edge of the land. Yeah, I like the sound, I like the, I like the smell as well. Um, and the wind as well. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. For example, when I was younger, and I was back home in my island, uh, a student and um, I used to enjoy very much on weekends uh, to go for a stroll on the beach um, just to relax because I was studying very much and so on so it was good for me to breathe some fresh air and uh, stare at the sea, the sun, the seagulls. Well it is a hypnotic thing isn't it because you've got the repetition of, of, of waves breaking on, on shorelines uh, and the, all the variations that that brings with it. I mean, storm force, um, lapping gentle water, um, those kind of things. I, I, I do think that uh, you know, sea is it's audio as well as visual and, and there's an attraction about that. There's another thing about it, isn't there? Because when you're standing uh, on the seashore, uh, and particularly maybe when, when the water is very gently lapped, you do have this sense, this opportunity to reflect on the fact that that shoreline you're standing on is linked by that water to every other shoreline globally, actually, because the globe is covered in water. So that's a big thought, um, that this gentle lapping that's going on at your feet is a symptom of something that were we able to transport ourselves psychically across it we would we would come to the next thing that interrupts it is is another landmass that we can't see and that's that's an extraordinary thought and and just the very sound of it i think is enough to evoke that idea i think having people uh, people around me is part of the atmosphere I don't fancy myself driving for 20 miles just to go to a nice little beach and spend the afternoon there. Uh, no. We like especially going to a cafe or a restaurant that has a view to the sea. To be honest, I work here from March, beginning of March this year, so it's about seven, eight months. I was working cruise ships before, so I had some experience on sea. 
Yeah, I love to go to the beach and most of the time, if I have some extra time, I always come back fishing with my friends. Yeah, it's relaxing and, and nice and clean. So, and of course, nice view. It's a little bit cold to see, but... <laughs> I don't know how universal this is, but it's certainly a very British thing. And it's, to, it's linked to the islandness of Britain. And that is to say the Victorian obsession that we still have as legacies of peers. The idea that the Victorians had that you could extend the land and walk on water by going out into it and have the water lapping underneath you and yet have all the trappings of the land there, theatres, bars, uh, restaurants, all these things. Ride Pier on the Isle of Wight is a very long pier. It's uh, There's a train that takes you along it because it would take you so long to walk it, but many people of course choose to walk it. And I think that the pier, this promontory that comes out from, from the coastline, from our beaches, uh, to extend them and to give us this opportunity to be in in the midst of the strangeness of the sea and yet firmly and safely moored at the same time. We're hedging our bets really, aren't we? We, we want the best of both worlds. At Bournemouth Beach, uh, I've lived in Bournemouth for many years and the tourist element of it is something anybody who lives in this town is obviously conscious of. You know, you, during the summer months, you get to know when to go to Bournemouth Beach. You don't go to Bournemouth Beach as a resident of Bournemouth uh, in the height of the summer during the day. You will see that the local people will go to Bournemouth Beach in the early evening and they will know that there's a certain time when the bed and breakfast in the hotels start to serve dinner. It's not beautiful. And I've been used to beaches that are, are splendid, marvellous, very impressive. This beach doesn't say nothing to me. From all the beaches that we have visited in England until now, Bournemouth's the, the one that's the most beautiful. And one remarkable point is like the difference in, in the in the people who, who come to Bournemouth and, and to other beaches. Uh, here, people look healthier. Uh, they look healthier and wealthier. <laughs> On the winter shore they are remaking what years have undone. While the grey light surges over horizon hill, they push a wedge into the sea. Stone. Wall. A groin through sand and shingle. A fence against sad water's will. I have written about it and I have uh, an ambivalent view of it. Uh, I do find it fascinating in the winter. Um, one of the things that I discovered that I found very evocative was that although Bournemouth is, uh, attracts people here for its sandy beaches, it doesn't by nature have sand on its beaches. It's actually a shingle beach. Um, and uh, the sand has to be uh, replenished from the, the seabed off the Isle of Wight, where it's dredged up and brought over. And, and January and February you'll see dredgers dumping sand on the beach and spreading it out again because the natural longshore drift takes the sand out. It, it doesn't by nature hold it. It makes sense to me because I think you can tell that something's wrong with that beach. It can't be so, so, so straight. It's not possible. If you go, if someone goes to Greece or even Italy, he gets to see that beaches are by nature very um, complicated. I think it's ambiguous uh, and changing and unpredictable and fascinating in a, in a mysterious sort of a way. It's less literal than the land and it's elemental. 
But as for me, for you, the irresistible sea is to separate us. As for an hour, carrying us diverse, yet cannot carry us diverse forever. Be not impatient, a little space, know you. I salute the air, the ocean and the land, every day at sundown, for your dear sake, my love. <laughs>